he was he was very big before, you know, very large, out of shape guy. But because of that extra weight, I'll bring it up on screen again. Look at the shape he's in there. Hello, guys. Welcome to the first on-camera session of 1M Discussions. Um, today, we're going to be talking about fat guys and how fat guys are in the perfect position to have the perfect body but they don't know it because they're getting the wrong information from everywhere, from every single source. And there's, excuse my voice, I've had a bit of a cold lately, if I sound a little bit nasally. Um, but there's a massive stigma when it comes to, or should I say, a, a current theme when it comes to being overweight, a fat guy. And I'm going to keep saying fat guys because everybody fat shames bigger people. Whereas I think it's actually a weapon for a lot of men. So I'm going to keep saying it so it becomes a positive. Um, I think there's negative connotation with being overweight. But if you're, under, if you're under 35, it could be a gigantic weapon, but nobody realizes it. So the current theme, if you're a bigger guy, is to get on the treadmill, you know, do your cardio, buy your sweatbands, um, just go for a run, just do something that makes you sweat. For some reason, everybody thinks that they're going to lose all that body fat, have a lean body, have a six pack, all of that fat's going to turn to muscle and they're going to look like a swimwear model. That's not what happens. You end up getting one of those skinny fat bodies because you haven't got any muscle underneath there, it's just fat, right? So your skeleton's still small. So you lose all of that body fat and now you just have this skinny but still flabby frame because... Your skin's been stretched out, and it's also very hard to lose that last, what do you say, last 15, 16% of body fat. A lot of people will find it very easy at the start to, let's say, lose 10, 15% if they're in the 30 to 40% body fat range. Um, but once you start getting down towards the, you know, the 10s or 20s around about that area, or the teens, I should say, it becomes very, very difficult to start losing even 1%. I mean, if you find guys that are 9% body fat and they want to get down to 8% for a competition, you can ask them. It's so difficult. It might take them two months to lose that final 1% of body fat and they're training hard. So, you know, this whole stigma of you just get on the treadmill, you just keep running and eventually you'll have washboard abs, abs and a surfer body. It's just not going to happen. Um, so these guys, they, they end up having everything that they need in place, which I'll explain in a second, and they lose it all from getting in the gym and just standing on a treadmill, going for a run, on the exercise bike, etc. And they just lose everything, everything that they've been blessed with. Now, it sounds silly for me to say everything they've been blessed with, but let me explain. So skinny guys will understand this. I was a skinny guy growing up. I've got myself to about 200 and about 205 pounds, 200 pounds at the moment. I just went through a giant cut. As I said, I've been ill. So, um, but when I was younger, I was, I was, I mean, I was probably about 140 pounds, 130 pounds. Um, and skinny guys will realize that like how hard it is to put on muscle, how hard it is to bulk up, how much that they look at bigger guys and go, wow, if I had that frame, the things that I could do with that would be unbelievable. So by being a bigger heavier guy, a fat guy, as I said earlier, I've got no problem with saying this because I'm going to turn it into a positive, is that you've already done the bulking part. Now, whether you do a clean bulk or a dirty bulk, both are hard. So as a heavier guy, you've already done the bulk. You've, let's say you're 24 years old, you're overweight, you're about 18 stone. In America, that would be, nobody uses stone anymore. In America, that would be about, what, 200 and... 30 pounds, maybe. Um, <clears throat> so let's say you've gone through that bulk, you're already like a real big heavy guy. Then you get on the treadmill and you lose it all. It just makes no sense because so many people, so many men out there are after the, you know, the size gains, the mass gains, the muscle gains, the big bulk, whether it's clean or dirty, and you're going to throw all of that away. Um, heavy guys don't realize that they're 50% of the way there. So to understand this, you have to understand that a skinny guy, in order to get the perfect body, has to bulk, cut off a little bit, bit of body fat. Bulk again, cut off a bit of body fat. Bulk again. This might go on six, seven, eight times throughout their whole life before they get to the 220 pounds of lean muscle period 
the stage of their life. Steve Walker, who you've seen me do a lot of videos with, he's done that periodically throughout his life. He's got bigger, cut a bit of body fat, got bigger, cut a bit of body fat sequentially. And um, now he's got the perfect body at 36 years old. At 35 or 6 years old, I believe he is. And it just takes a long, long time. So if you're a bigger, heavier guy and you're still young, you're in a perfect position. You might already be 220, 230, 240 pounds. This is a gigantic weapon. So instead of doing the cardio, let's say you go, it's health permitting as well. I mean, if a doctor says you're in really bad health, you're going to have to do some light cardio and lose some weight first, then obviously take their, take their orders. Um, but if you're not in that extreme environment, which most people aren't, then the best thing you can do is start lifting heavy weights. You know, train as if you're trying to train for aesthetic muscle. So you want to be lifting in the 8 to 12 rep range, around about 3 to 4 sets per exercise. Stick to your compound lifts. And uh, by lifting heavy, there's three advantages for bigger, heavier guys. Number one, and this is probably the biggest weapon, is that your legs are already big because you're carrying around that body weight or you've, you've been carrying around that body weight for maybe four to five years. Now, you're going to have gigantic calves, which a lot of guys chase after their whole life. You're going to have bigger legs and you're going to have more of a foundation underneath you, which equals a big squat and it equals a big deadlift and other exercises too. But those two mainly to build in that testosterone so we can convert that fat into muscle. Um, now, the second advantage is the fact that you're already heavy. Now, if anybody's ever watched the World's Strongest Man's competitions, you'll know that the big heavy guys can lift more just purely based on body weight. I remember seeing a show before about um, if an elephant was our size, they wouldn't be able to outlift us. They're, all their strength basically comes from their body weight. So um, when you put that into consideration, you think these bigger, heavier guys that might weigh 240, 250 pounds, you're going to be able to, your compound lifts are going to be bigger, they're going to be heavier, which means that you're going to be able to create more muscle because you're going to be able to, you know, reach those higher limits quicker. Now, a skinny guy starting out might be benching 60 kg, um, whereas a big, heavy guy might have no problem with 120, 130, which is going to convert to big, strong muscle quickly. You know, they're going to be able to get those better and bigger gains because the stronger you are, obviously the bigger you're going to look with that body weight. That's some serious weight that you're throwing around. It's going to, it's going to convert to some big, powerful, functional muscle. It's, uh, it's, it's a massive weapon. Now, I've got it on screen because I wrote an article on this. If you wanted to read it in article form, head over to firstman.com. It'll all be on there. Um, but the third thing, as I, I touched on, is the bulking. That's the third advantage, is that you've already done it. So instead of going through that bulk cut, bulk cut, bulk cut kind of phase that a lot of people have to do, you're already big. All you have to do is just convert that fat to muscle by lifting heavy. And I guarantee you will probably end up around about 220, yeah, about 200 to 220 pounds of just pure lean muscle with a decent size. If you go from a fat guy who lifts heavy weights, does his compounds, trains like a man should, gets his testosterone up, it's going to create the perfect body. Now, a skinny guy is going to take a lot longer. It's going to take more years of commitment, clean bulk, dirty bulk. You know, if you're a big, heavy guy, you've already gone through the worst of it. You're 50% of the way there. Now you just convert that fat to muscle and stay away from the cardio because that's the way to do it. Now, if you're wondering whether I'm full of shit, if this has ever been done before, the thing is... I'm going to bring two guys up on screen now. One is Sam Asghari, who's currently dating Britney Spears. Um, I found Sam around about five, six years ago, did an interview with him. Really nice guy, uh, very humble. Um, and his before and after pictures, which I'll bring up on screen now, you'll be able to see, are unbelievable. So Sam was, I think, around about 250, 260 pounds in weight. And he started eating properly. That's, that's a big part of this guy is to eat properly as well. Because um, if you are a big, heavy guy, you've probably been eating poorly. So the training plus a good diet, you're going to have the perfect body. It's just going to convert. So Sam starts lifting weights. Next thing you know, he looks fantastic, but he's still got the size. So he's lean and big, which is what every man kind of wants. I mean, maybe not everybody, but I'd say 99, maybe 95% of guys want to be big and lean all at the same time, right? So next thing, he starts dating models. 
Um, he starts starring in music videos. He gets a giant Instagram following. And we got the backlash from that. Everybody was pointing back to our website, MSI College, back in the day, which is one of the reasons why it became really successful. So thank you, Sam, for that. Um, and we had Perez Hilton, US Magazine, the Daily Mail, all pointing back to us saying who this guy was because we were the only people with an interview with him. And then he started dating Britney Spears. And today you can see that the guy has probably one of the most perfect bodies that a man could hope for. Now the second example, um, and this one is a lot more telling in the leg region, is, I think I'm saying this correctly, I spoke to the guy the other day via email. He lives in Miami, we're trying to get together, put a project together, it's quite tough. Um, is Ramses Principe. I think that's how you say his name. I hope I haven't mispronounced it. Sorry if I have. Um, he, was, he was very big before, you know, very large, out of shape guy. But because of that extra weight, I'll bring it up on screen again. Look at the shape he's in there. Um, he's got that perfect, like, thick man's body, if that makes sense. So he's big and lean, but it looks very thick. It looks solid built, especially the legs. That's probably the best lower body that I've seen on a man for a long, long time. Um, I think the, the size of the legs, the glute area, I think a lot of guys strive for that kind of structure. Um, you know, and that's going to build a lot, of, that's going to create a lot of testosterone, which is going to build a lot of good, big, strong, lean muscle. Um, and that all comes from being a fat guy from being overweight in the past, you know, and he starts lifting weights. Now, both of those guys that I just brought up on screen, if they had gone the other way and got on the treadmills, today, today they'd be skinny fat, they wouldn't have a career, they wouldn't be dating models, they wouldn't be as rich and as happy as they are, and they wouldn't have the life that they have. You know, because you get this decision, if you're an overweight guy, you can either go down the cardio route or the proper training route because it's harder, and a lot of people want to avoid it. They think, I'll just get on the treadmill, quick shortcut, perfect body, lean abs not the way to do it now because they went that way and they went the harder work, harder route maybe within two or three years they have the perfect body now a skinny guy it might take 10 12 15 years to get that perfect body um you know it's just so so difficult so to my point that i made earlier fat guys you are in the perfect position to have the most perfect male body that everybody chases after you don't know how envied you could be but so many go the wrong way and go down the cardio route and it messes everything up. So any fat guys, I'm looking at you. If you're watching this, there's gigantic hope for you. There's probably more hope for you than guys who are kind of in shape or lean already. You know, you might look at them and say, I wish I had their body. Honestly, you guys are blessed. You don't realize how lucky you've been accidentally or genetically. You know, you might say it's poor genetics. It's actually very, very good for you. Um, Sign up to the gym, start lifting heavy, obviously be careful, like take your time, only lift what you're comfortable with, and then when you become better at training, um, you know, start rising up through the ranks and doing a little bit more, but stick with your compound lifts, you know, do what you can for the time being, and I guarantee you, if you follow the routines of, let's say, Sam Asghari, um, Ramses, you're going to look fantastic, you're going to have the most enviable body that a man can ask for, big and lean, all at the same time. Thank you.